everyone, welcome back to Bet Me A Date. Today I'm gonna to be speaking with Booni Sripam and Dr. Dustin Weissman again. And we're gonna be talking about adolescence and video gaming um, and how it can affect their friendships and their romantic relationships. I'm Dr. Aviva Gaskill, welcome back to my channel. I'm a clinical health psychologist who helps people overcome dating fears and challenges, but I can't do this work alone. I do it with the help of experts like Dr. Dustin Weissman and Booni Sripam. Don't forget to check us out on betmeadate.com to help you meet all your dating goals. Welcome back everybody. Uh, today I'm going to be speaking with uh, Booni Sripam and Dr. Dustin Weissman about the impact of uh, video gaming and screen time on adolescents. Um, Winnie, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, everybody. I'm a life, uh, life, laugh. I am a therapy informed life coach. I work with gifted and creative people and a large group of people that I love working with are gamers. I, I use archetypes and, and the geek culture to help people identify their strengths to become their best selves. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And Dr. Weissman? Yeah, I'm a licensed clinical psychologist. Uh, Booney and I are both in California, and uh, I see in family groups uh, for therapy dealing with a range of issues. I mostly focus on internet-based addictions and men's issues, uh, but I also work with a lot of the major mental health disorders as well, like depression and anxiety. And I have a private practice uh, in Calabasas, Agora Hills area, which is currently just telehealth. Wonderful, thanks. Booney, why don't you start? Can you tell us a little bit about um, the impact of gaming, screen time on adolescents, just in general, from what you see? Um, I think in general, there's a different baseline and culture, what we see in terms of learning how to communicate, getting our needs met. Um, I'm sure Dr. Weissman will explain to you that there's this, like, this feedback loop that you get, right? with uh, stimulation, the sounds that screens and, and games offer us. So it's very, mm -hmm. um, you know, the gamified nature of things. It's like when you feel a little ding, when you level up, it's, it feels good, right? And so our teenagers are learning that life has to get increasingly more intense for you to get, get a certain type of feedback. And that may affect relationships where we're looking for a higher level of intensity with our relationships and it can manifest in different ways. Maybe it's like a type of communication, a type of um, intense way of expressing care or sensation seeking that our teenagers are looking for and they might not be getting it in relationships so they might be drawn back to the screen or the games. So it's like this going back and forth seeking a stimulation that's not provided in the outside world. Mm -hmm. Okay, what do you think Dr. Dr. Weissman? Uh, which part would you like to, you know, to elaborate Just the, the, Well, so, you could actually speak about both. So the impact on adolescents. I know, Booney, you also started speaking a little bit about socialization, too. But maybe speak to a little bit of both of those. That would be great. Yeah, I mean, with adolescents, especially as they become more secluded, they'd reach out to a social network that's online. As Booney's talking about, you get into this reinforcement loop where the more you communicate with these people online, the more likely that is going to be the community, uh, the community that you build. Mm -hmm. Whereas the ones that you would see in person do real life activities with, you're seeing them less, so you're less likely to see them. Uh, so as one goes up, the other mm -hmm. goes down, and it takes an extra effort to break mm -hmm. that cycle and say, you know, I haven't seen my best friend in a while. Mm -hmm. I should go hang out with them or do a right. call with them. Uh, it's really difficult with adolescents that when you focus in on a group, because they're very peer group driven, that yeah. that's the one you want to put 100% heart and soul into. What about, um, Booney, like starting a new friendship? How does that go for adolescents when they're dealing with gaming too much? Oh my goodness, that is very scary. And I'm going to call it a foreign concept. Like what kind of game is this? Like making a friend in the outside world. Like I don't know the rules to this. Like there is no mm. manual. <laughs> it's a very different, like you don't get points on a consistent basis. <laughs> you don't know how to read the, um, the feedback that you get. Like, is this supposed to be a quest? Like, what am I doing here? So yeah. reframing everything is very different if you've spent your, most of your life or uh, you know, an important chunk of your life online because 
the parameters are there. You can actually go on a wiki online and look up how to do something. You know, the cheats are there. The people have already done it on the forums. They'll, they'll walk you through the game. But when it comes to making a friend outside, it is so unique because it is not like a game. People are individual. We have different personalities. We have to work through conflict. And that may not always be the case when you play certain games or if you don't play the um, multiplayer types of games where you have to learn how to um, communicate well with people and work as a team. So there could be some people who could tra like, you know, transfer, do, do it quite easily for others who maybe play solo games more often. Um, I think there's a gap where that the strategies and learning how to initiate and keep on going with without knowing the indicators that you're doing well, you know, yeah. like you don't get the points or the shiny noises. Um, you're not sure what you're doing, if it's right or wrong. And certainly that feedback is not always so immediate, for mm -hmm. sure. What do you think, Dr. Weissman? Booney made a really, really good point there with the types of game that you're playing, because in you know an MMORPG or just an MMO where you're interacting with people that you know a lot of those are built around social factors there's community there's guilds and factions and there's squatting and you're really working together and in that there's downtime uh, mm -hmm. to talk and communicate in the chat boxes or just on discord wherever you're using but in the first person shooter battle royale games it's a completely different level mm -hmm. of communication a lot more intensity a lot more yelling a lot more cussing and mm -hmm. a lot less, uh, hey, so, you know, where are you from? What do you do when mm -hmm. you're not playing? It's not that because it's quick and it's over and done with. Now, people might find friends on there and communicate on Discord and or other sites and have that community, but it's not the same forum. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're asking a really big question, which is sometimes a million dollar question for adolescents of how do you start forming a new friendship? And it is not easy. Booney's right. It's not an easy thing to do, especially if you're playing these particular first person shooter or games like that, where it's a lot more action based. Uh, so yeah. it's okay to reach out for help on that one. <laughs> well, it's interesting too, because something dawned on me just now as you were talking, both of you guys were talking, which is that we've also like dealt with the American family size going down a lot. And so, you know, people don't have as much ability to kind of um, interact with siblings as much mm -hmm. as they used to and sort of find way, uh, find people skills through that. Mm -hmm. And right. now you're talking about kind of even more isolation and even more um, kind of for some groups of people, right? Uh, people who prefer these one-on-one -on -one player games, you know, where they're even having less of this human interaction. Yeah. Really, how do you think that um, all this stuff affects dating? Oh, I think it affects dating on a large scale. So I love asking this question on my Facebook because I have a massive amount of gamers and people who have dated gamers will answer very <laughs> candidly about their experiences. And there's this clash online about, it's not about the game. You, know, you just have to have uh, underlying foundational interests and it'll be fine. Or you just have to have boundaries and the, and the gaming is not going to be a problem. But it is not always about the game. But it always tends to manifest in terms of like, let's focus on blaming the game. I think the game is just a sign of many things. You know, if you do have the social skills or the way abilities to connect with people, then the game wouldn't be a problem, right? right? But sometimes we use the game as this indirect way to identify a need has not been met. And that need probably is, um, you know, sensation seeking. It's a need to connect in a way that is comfortable but indirect at the same time. A lot of gamers like myself, I have a difficult time with with eye contact with people, you know, with um, being connected on a conversation for a long time without needing to separate for some type of stimulation. So there's different needs that I think are not considered when discussing a gamer or someone who is playing um, on screens using technology for a certain need. And then when our teens' brains are being shaped so early, it's generally generationally very different. I'm very fascinated because I'm sure all of us are on the cusp of between analog and tech, like everything's you know digital, right? So we saw the transition. We saw the difference between being able to play outside, no big deal. Now everyone is just touching screens all the time. I'm still fascinated with watching young people, you know, like, wow, 
automatic connection, automatic needing to touch buttons and screens. Yeah. Um, it's just a fascination with me. And so when it comes to relationships, I do see the need for like for people our age and older, you know, we can probably transition and talk about it. We need to separate from the technology. But for the teens, like they're being forced to use it with school too. I, I think it's yes. even more difficult to like, well, you make me do this with school. How come I can't have fun using it now too? So like when they're dating, it's even more internalized as an extension of their arm probably to touch yeah. something. Yeah. And I think that I don't really have a clear answer except that it's just going to require practice to push them out of their comfort zone and to know that we're doing it from a place of care. Like, you know, I know you're not going to trust me now because I'm kicking you out of the, the video game space, but this is something that you're going to wish that you had sooner kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about you, Dr. Weissman? What do you think about the issues with dating for adolescents and, and gaming? Yeah, I think Booney's been reading my dissertation because one thing that you <laughs> was the importance of what you're doing online, why you're going in there. And that's what my dissertation found was people who found the squad component important, like they're going in this intimate uh, party of people where it's, you know, five, six people, they're going to be doing a certain quest or adventure or whatever it is that you're doing with that group that the ones who found that the most important struggled the most. Yeah. And I think the reasoning for that was because they weren't getting those needs met in yes. real life. Whereas people who had those skills and came and played leisurely, it didn't matter how many hours they were playing. They were mm -hmm. fine. They, you know, they weren't necessarily reporting as lonely. It was only the ones who they had a correlation with importance of squads. And it wasn't even like that with, you know, are you a member of a guild? Because I guess a lot of those games allowed for guild membership. So it was really the ones that seek that specific uh, component because it was asking is it important to you mm -hmm. so knowing that about yourself whoever you know you are listening or watching this that if you're going online for the sole purpose to fulfill your social needs that might be a red flag for you that you might be lonelier than you had originally thought mm -hmm. it seems especially pertinent what you said um, for someone who maybe is on, on the autistic spectrum and a gamer and trying to be in the dating world if you don't have those um, some of the other skills there too. Um, so what do each of you guys think about how someone can work to change um, and to better these skills? I know you mentioned a little bit about it, but can you give us any, um, any tips um, for folks who are looking to, to change more? I know you mentioned practice, Booney. Um, so I do see things in terms of skills to level up. Mm -hmm. um, it really does matter how you, how do you, let's see, reference or identify the purpose or intention of a task. That's basically it. Like when you see the end goal, of course you're gonna feel like a failure because it's so far away. Uh, one part of coaching and you know working on goals is to back it up. What's the smallest step you can do today to get closer to the goal? Because the goal could change any day. We don't know what it's gonna, uh, you know, evolve into because you're such a unique person, context matters, things change. And so when we focus too far ahead, that's, you know, chasing dragons. So in gaming terminology, like, you know, let's do a, a small quest. Like when you start a game in the beginning, they have you do the, ah, they have you do the silliest <laughs> things, like go pick up a rock or something, right? Like anybody can pick up a rock, like go push the A button. Hooray, you push, you push the A button, you know, like, so the same thing can be for connecting with a friend. Um, it doesn't have to be someone that you don't know, you know, like, oh, you're a student. Do you think you could ask someone for their phone number or their discord name to ask them about homework? Mm -hmm. That's something very neutral. Uh, it's something can be scary at the same time, but it's something that maybe, hey, uh, there's no agenda here. But for me internally, it's to me to kind of level up on my socialization skills, learning how to be okay with connecting and asking something that's not as loaded as a relationship. So let's mm -hmm. talk about homework. Let's ask questions about the assignment, or I need help with this. Even talking to your professors, your instructors, that's important too, because there's, there's multiple ways for us to get the, the care that we haven't gotten in a game when we focus so much on it as uh, providing our socialization need. And I have done that before too. So like, I'm thinking about if you had the, 
ability to connect with your teachers and they could find ways to connect with you as well. I'm sure teachers could find ways to promote your positive traits when you do an assignment or if you're asking for feedback, they can be more specific. Mm -hmm. So again, this is communication. This is asking for ways to grow, little things like that. Yeah, that's great, that's great. What do you think, Dr. De Dr. Wilson? Yeah, just to add to that, if you feel like, well, yeah, that's easy for me because some it is and some it's not. So just to extend that, if you're like, yeah, I could talk to somebody, then maybe it's extending the depth of the communication you're already having with people online or in person, you know, asking them, hey, how are you? Or taking the next step of, oh, I'm good. Okay, oh, what's, what's good in your life right now? Mm -hmm. Or I'm struggling. Oh, what were you struggling with? Uh, asking those follow-up questions that are open-ended that allow them to respond with more than just yes and no. So mm -hmm. avoid those you know, are you doing this? Yeah. <laughs> oh, would you like to do that? No. Yeah. You know, those aren't, those are, it's instantly shutting you down. You know, how questions, what questions, those are what you want to be asking. Tell people. me about. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, I'm wondering what's that like, mm -hmm. you know, you have all these friends. I wish I could have friends. What's that like for you? Mm -hmm. and, and then the response might shock you. It's like, it's a, it's a juggling match and it's hard to balance all these different friendships or a lot of them are uh, surface level and there's no depth to them. So just because something looks like it's really good, you know, that popular mm -hmm. person might seem really popular, doesn't mean that they have a close, good friend. You know, the, the happiest person might be the one person that you think is an outcast, but they have another person that's an outcast with them and they're completely happy being outcasts and they have each other to, you know, live and navigate the, the struggles and jungles of being an adolescent. Yeah. So, it's not necessarily the grass, or it is really the grass is greener on the other mm -hmm. side scenario. That it might look good on the surface, but until you actually talk to that person, figure out their story, it might not be as good as it looks. So what you might be wanting from your mm -hmm. relationships, because basing it on somebody else's, might not actually be the true value of what it is. So I guess investigating it a little bit more, uh, if you feel more comfortable talking to people about that. Yeah, I mean, and I think you know, I mean, usually people have to go through a lot of friends to find meaningful friendships or definitely. many people that they date before they find a meaningful romantic relationship. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it parallels very well into the dating world when, you know, that couple mm -hmm. seems so happy. I wish I could have their bliss. Mm -hmm. You know, they're so happy on social media maybe because mm -hmm. they're posting the good stuff. Yeah. You know, and they're not going to post their fights and their struggles. That's, yeah. that's what social media mostly is for. If you have any one of those friends who likes to post the bad stuff too, in addition to the good, make sure you like some of their stuff so you get more of that because it humbles your Facebook or your Instagram posting stories in that you'll see more reality. Yeah. Uh, and, and don't be shy to post your reality. If you're struggling with something, whether it's major or minor, go ahead and post it if, if you want to, if you're comfortable sharing that because then you can get honest feedback. But just be careful, whatever you put out there, you're opening up for criticism. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a good point. Thank you both so, so much for talking with us about this topic today. Um, where can people who are interested uh, in hearing more about you and your work find you, Looney? Um, my website is organizedmesses.com and my YouTube is also, oh, and my Instagram is also Organized Messes. I also wanted to add, um, yeah. with, in terms of friendships and relationships, just find your weird, keep going. Yes, yes. I always tell my patients, let your freak flag fly. Definitely. <laughs> what about you, Dr. Weissman? Where can people find you? Yeah, so I mean, you can probably see my name right here. So just DR, and then my last name, Weissman, psychology.com. And you can also have a podcast with 19 episodes on their CyberSense Power Up podcast. And that's on iTunes, Spotify, all the podcasting sites. Awesome. Thank you both so much. Like, subscribe, and check out more of our dating videos on helping you overcome your dating challenges on Bet Me a Date.